Today I'm harvesting sweet potatoes from my two grassroots fabric raised beds. They're both four feet by four feet and I grew my sweet potatoes in them last year. That actually led to an experiment because we're always told to grow your sweet potatoes from slips. However, I had several sweet potatoes that were accidentally left in the, in the bed and they came up again this spring. I spread them out evenly in the bed they came up in and planted the same amount of slips in the second bed. I wanted to see which would do better. So today's the day to find out. Now sweet potatoes are ready about three to four months after planting them. It's been about four and a half months since I planted these and you'll know they're getting ready when they start looking a little yellow or they might start to bloom. In cold winter climates, you'll probably know it's time to harvest when the frost comes and kills the leaves. They will be black. At that time, you have just a few days to get them out of the ground before that rotting and decay from the leaves moves into the tubers. If you let them grow too long, they can start to split and nobody wants that. The first thing to do is remove the leaves. That will make harvesting much, much easier. Some of the greener ones you can eat. Sweet potato leaves are edible and nutritious, but these are going to the chickens. You could also let your chickens into the garden a couple days prior to harvest and they can take care of it on site. Just make sure they can't get to anything else you want to keep. You can also use a mower set to high if you're working a large area. If you're growing in the ground, you can use a spade or a fork to loosen the ground up. In these raised beds, it's easy enough just to get in there and start pulling the potatoes out. This first bed with the tubers that came up from the previous year look really good. Now to dig the bed with the plants grown from slips. When I started, I noticed that these looked different from the other bed. A lot of the potatoes didn't have that bright orange color to them. Now, I don't think this has anything to do with the way they were planted, but they were all the same variety, Beauregard. There was some splitting in this bed as well. I didn't find any split ones in the first bed. So here is the haul from the second bed quite a bit less than the first bed. Now this doesn't definitively prove anything, but I will try this again next year. And the more times I do it, if it comes up with the same results, then that could prove something at least to me. Once you've dug your sweet potatoes, it's time to cure them. It's important you don't scrub or wash your sweet potatoes before curing. You can gently brush off excess soil, but be gentle with them. Place them in a single level across a table away from rain and animals. Commercial growers cure their sweet potatoes in special rooms at 85 degrees Fahrenheit at 80 to 90% humidity. This goes on for five to 10 days. The curing causes the starch to convert to sugar and helps to heal any cuts that could lead to rotting. The potatoes are then stored for six to eight weeks at 55 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit to further increase the sugar content. Now that's not something most home gardeners can do. You can at least partially cure the roots though by leaving them on a porch or in a garage or another covered outdoor location for about a week. After that week, move the sweet potatoes to a cool dry place, store them in boxes or baskets that allow for good air circulation and the sugar content will slowly increase in that storage time. Sweet potatoes take a long time to grow and they need to be started really early. Like we're talking three to four months from right now. Make sure you're ready by clicking this video right here. It's a complete growing guide for sweet potatoes. I'll see you next time.